By the way, my kid barfed on me right before I started filming. Is that on camera? Is it in frame? No. Excellent. <laughs> Hide your mess. What's up guys, welcome back. Today, I have a bunch of new stuff from Kierweiss. I finally learned from their Instagram how to actually pronounce it. I was saying Kierweiss for a long time, so it's Kierweiss. I have their new cheek colors by request from you guys. So I have their cream blush here. Oh no, it doesn't say it on there, it says it in here and I can't do that. Okay, let me pull my order up real quick. <laughs> Off to a roaring start, Khaki. Inner Glow and Blushing. I also got the Wanderer colorway in their new quadrant, which, is this new? I'm pretty frustrated because getting it out of the package was so difficult that I ended up cracking the powder, which is a little bit annoying. So that. I also got a deluxe sample of a cream blush in Sun Touched. And then I also picked up a lipstick for the very first time. I will be trying their lipstick in the shade Genuine. So I have that. I have some other products from them. I will kind of talk through my experience with the brand prior to now, and then you guys will get to see my first impression of these colors. I've played with, a, well, I've played with the cheek formulas before, but this is my first time owning whole pans of them. I just had samples before. And we will also kind of do a first impression on the eyeshadow formula and I will give you guys my final thoughts at the end so let me move you guys in and we will get started hello all right I need to start with some skin prep I just remembered that this foundation really likes it when your skin is nice and dewy first so I'm gonna go in with my mineral sheer screen like I always would anyway so I kicked off the morning watching Sesame Street with my little one he doesn't really know what's going on but Sesame Street is how I learned everything that I know so now I have sunny days sweeping the clouds away. <laughs> Just drilled into my brain. It's kind of a bop, but it's also a major earworm. Okay, I'm going in with the liquid foundation from Curewise. I have it in the shade Lightness, which was dumb on my part. I was used to seeing myself in more golden, deeper tones when I first tried Curewise and I based this shade choice on that when really it's just a little too dark for me, but that's okay. I have tons of ways of remedying that. The other thing that frustrates me about this <laughs> is that the eyedropper barely pulls any product out of this because it traps air. It's a little annoying, but we're going to make do. But you can see that's a little bit, a little bit tan for me. Oh yeah, I forgot this has a fragrance kind of a floral powdery fragrance. Now, one thing that I will not be using, if you are new to my channel or you haven't watched previous Kierweiss videos on my channel, I did review their concealer at one point and it is, in my opinion, just not good. Its main ingredient is kaolin clay and it behaves like kaolin clay on my skin. It really looks kind of like mud. It sort of granulates, it's very dry, it looks kind of like a mud mask, not a concealer. And that's how it behaved for me. I tried it so many different ways because I think it is like $38, it's something crazy, and I genuinely wanted it to work and I just couldn't get it to. I'm going to use this e.l.f. Under Eye Brightener Concealer. This is a great little product. I tried this first in my drugstore dupes for high-end products where I was duping the Chantecaille and I ended up just really liking this. It's got more coverage than the Chantecaille and it also is a fairer shade than I got in the Chantecaille. So I actually really enjoy this. Low coverage, brightening, very lovely. So there are several options when you're buying Kierweiss on their website or anywhere, I guess, where you have the option to use one of, or buy one of their reusable metal tins that are quite pricey, but they're very heavy and luxurious, and then you buy replacement pans. And if you don't want to spend all that money, you can buy their red edition, which is just this little faux leather embossed compact, and it is like cardboard that's been, you know, wrapped in a coating. And it's super lightweight, and it is also reusable. 
and um, you just buy the replacement pans for that. So this color that I did order the full size of, yeah, that's a full size. It's a, it's a sample in many brands, but this is a super pricey. Oh my God trying to film right now is so infuriating and then he's gonna do that. As I was saying, everything in this is very, very precious. This, as I often say about these high-end brands, this is a specific customer. You either are this person or you are not. I do have an appreciation for things that are very precious, but um, only if they really, you know, deliver in terms of the formula. So this is the shade, like I said, Inner Glow. I think that that's going to work beautifully as a good first wash of color. Then we have Sun Touched, which is what they gave me as a sample. And it's not iridescent like the other one, and it is just a kind of coral, light coral pink. And then we have a shimmery, sort of bright coral pink, and this is the shade Blushing. Oh my, blushing is pinky, pinky, pink. So that is Inner Glow, Sun Touched, and Blushing. I'm just going to go into painter mode. I'm going to start with Inner Glow. See what that, oh my God, that's beautiful. Wow, okay, so it is mauve-ish, but it actually does read more like a bronzer on my skin. It has a really beautiful, luminous iridescence that doesn't, I mean, I guess you can see a little tiny bit of like a mica shimmer. My freckles show through. I feel like that picks up some really pretty natural tones in my skin. And what a nuanced color that is. I really, I don't know what to compare that to. It is like a cool, neutral mauve contour type shade, but I'm using it as like a cool bronzer. Cause I mean, that is, when you look at that in the pan, that looks like a contour to me. And there are plenty of people who, because these come in these tiny pans and they are creams, prefer to put these on with their fingers. If you feel like a brush is really fussy, then, then don't. <laughs> I feel like I actually have more control and that things go faster when I pull out a tool in most cases. Now, when I'm applying a foundation like this that tends to be a little bit finicky depending on what skincare or skin prep that I've done underneath it, I will apply that with my fingers. It's almost like I wanna feel it as it's going on. I like want to be able to control where the product is going and make sure that everything gets covered because it does take a little bit longer to apply a complexion product with a tool. And so it can dry down in weird places or spread out in weird places. Man, that's pretty. Like, you know, I've been out in the sun, but in a tasteful way. <laughs> I didn't burn myself. I might've been wearing a hat. <laughs> Earth mother, maybe I was gardening. I don't know. <laughs> I guess I just really like the shade and I'm try trying to create a scenario around it. All right, we'll do just a little bit on my nose because that is where the sun would hit. I feel like this is the color of my freckles. Is that, that's funny. I mean, I think my freckles might be a touch warmer than that, but I feel like it picks up in this way that looks like, some, you know, people who have a lot of freckles but can't get a tan always say, well, if all my freckles were joined together, then, you know, I'd have a tan. That's what I feel like this is. It's naturally occurring. That's so pretty. So that to me reads as almost just a skin tone enhancement is something that, I don't know, it really does just mimic being out in the sun. Whereas I, you know, think that blush is something that I always say I like to editorialize like better than life, <laughs> better than what, what, what would normally happen. So I am since, you know, this is just a sample and these are the two actual new shades. This is what I'm going to go in with. So this is blushing. I think that these are new. You guys asked me to buy the two new ones and when I went on their website, it said new over these. So I would think that something called blushing would be a pretty classic shade. And if it is, I apologize, but we're still going to have a great time. <laughs> That's very, very pretty. Again, this is another one that is shimmery. And just gently 
washing that on. And while it's very hot pink on its own, I feel like when it goes over that other one, it pulls a little bit more cool toned, picks up and mixes with the cool tones in the other one. And it mixes nicely with the natural tones in my skin. And it's giving me this like freckle showing through enhanced sunburn kind of look, you know, not a sunburn, but a sun flush. I'm not opposed to a sunburn, but I mean like the look of it. But that's, I guess why I'm going high on my cheeks is because when the sun hits you, you know, if I've been running around at the beach when I was a kid and stuff, that might be a little bit much. Um, I would always get sun right there and I would always get big, bright, rosy lips. <laughs> and then it would also reflect up from the sand. So you do end up with it on your chin. I am all about mimicking nature, especially when it comes to stuff that's just supposed to be creamy and like, you know, almost skincare. All right. Now we have this eyeshadow palette. It is so much smaller than I thought that it was going to be. And granted, you know, it would still take me a long time to work through those shades. They're so tiny and close together. I wonder if you're just kind of supposed to like use two at a time. And um, I think that the safest way to go about this is to just start by putting my finger in this. Okay, so if you rub the first two together right here, you do get this really pretty kind of cool charcoal brown like a sooty, tawny kind of shade. That's very, very pretty. Not undupable by any means, but I also do like that the formula actually works well on top of the tackiness that's on my skin from the other products. So that is something that will drive me crazy a lot of times is when the products that are in a small collection don't work together. Like that's the reason that I have never, and a lot of people have encouraged me to, but I've never picked up the powder bronzer from Westman Atelier is because it is a powder and everything else is a cream and I'm sure that I could make it work, but it's just always been something that I've shied away from for that reason. I've always said to myself, well, I would probably use it, but not with the other products. And so I just end up never doing it. But even when someone commented just yesterday and said, you have to try it, it's so good. So I might, but I guess what I'm saying is that this works really nicely. It almost turns into a little bit more of a cream when you touch it on top of the other stuff. And the other things that I have on my skin are not so emollient. I think if I was using the cream foundation, it would be a different story. But the one that I have on right now does, it goes on really, really thinly. I'm just going to take a pencil brush into those same two shades and go underneath, get a little bit of a smoky under eye. Probably a pencil brush isn't the right answer. I need something a, a touch fluffier than that to really diffuse it, but I also want to use some of the green, even if I'm just layering it on top. Now see, it's like impossible for me to pick the green up without getting my finger a little bit in the pink. Can you see that? There's like a tiny bit of pink right there. It's like really, really difficult, but. I absolutely would mix that green in with that brown. I wish that it went black, brown, green, pink, or something like that, because I want the brown and the green next to each other. So I'm taking a brush and very delicately dipping that because that color is beautiful. It's like a really pretty olive color, but I don't want to pick up more of that gray. And it's a little bit unavoidable. I think that this thing has sort of jumped the shark in terms of preciousness, you know? But they do layer nicely. And they continue to stick, but they also continue to spread. They come in these little paper packets. They're cardboard, really, and you have to punch them out. And the creams came with like a tab that you could grab a hold of and punch them out. But this just came with a circular perforation 
and it was incredibly difficult to get into, so I had to pull scissors out, and as I pulled scissors out, which I thought would be actually the least reckless way to go about it, I still ended up breaking the packaging and bending the pan and breaking a little bit of the shadow off, which wouldn't be a concern if there was an abundance of it to begin with, but there isn't. I do enjoy formulas that are this agreeable though. Like, do I love trying to fit my finger or a brush into something this tiny? No. But this is an effortless formula. It's very easy to use. And even though it is lower in terms of pigment, it still packs a punch. I don't think that it would be dusty so much. It, it might be, I don't know. It would depend on like what you're going for because if you're looking for something that's like very pitchy, um, this, you know, this gray is going to disappoint you. But they do have a few colorways. All right, let's put on a little bit of mascara. We'll clean this up a little bit. I'm not going to do an eyeliner or anything. I'm just going to try and keep it simple. I'm feeling a bit naked compared to how I would typically do my makeup because I'm not wearing any eyeliner. It is funny how you get used to seeing yourself, but I am going to keep diverting, you know, keep going towards something slightly different. And I am going to open up this lipstick. So all of Kira Weiss's stuff takes into consideration the, you know, reusability, the sustainability of the packaging. And, you know, this is all glass, this beautiful frosted glass, but um, this actually has a replaceable interior cartridge. And so that is the part that you replace. So this is the shade that I got. It is the shade Genuine. I got it because it is kind of a cool, Movi rose color. Oh my god. Oh my god, it's so pretty. Wow, 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 wow. Wow. Oh god, it's that same smell. Why do they do that? Who picked that smell? I'm really sorry if you like that smell, but it's just so odd. It's it's so like floral and waxy and powdery. It's just an odd choice. It doesn't feel contemporary. And why put a fragrance at all? You know, especially in clean beauty. Anyway. Hmm. I don't know whether it's luck or there's swatches online or whether I'm actually getting better at this, but that color is amazing <laughs> and I want to use it on my cheeks like in the future not today because I feel like we still accomplish like they pretty much match but that's incredibly pretty it's creamy but it's kind of matte feeling and when you're putting it on it doesn't feel slippy it's really nice okay well that is everything that I had today that's really satisfying that's a satisfying little click that's nice. Very, very nice bullet. Super duper heavy, I love that. All right, let's go on the website and we will talk about the new stuff and the prices and everything, especially if you're new to Kierweiss and need to get your head around it. Yes, so they, I'm correct, they still say new on the website. So again, the shades are Inner Glow and Blushing and they are from $32. The red edition is $37. The refill is $32. And the iconic edition, which comes with that slide out compact, is $56. Looks like 13 shades. And they are everything from very, very pale colors. You know, almost a lighter than the lightest ivory skin tone type pink, all the way down to like rich, um, you know, bright corals and raspberry colors. And then that new blushing shade is probably their most saturated coral. The lipstick refill is $32 and the iconic edition, which is what I got, is $56. That's just one of those products where I think I just went, mm, you know, add to cart and just, you know, hoped for the best, but these shades are absolutely beautiful. It was just something that if I was going to make the order, I'd always wanted to try their lipsticks. And while I do like this shade, it is a very 
unexpected formula. I was expecting it to be creamier. Benefits, moisture rich, hydrating formula infused with nourishing oils and skincare ingredients, highly pigmented color with a velvety finish, silicone free formula with creamy buttery feel and glide. There's not really any glide and I'm not, I don't dislike it at all. In fact, it's really pretty and it has a lot of really even pigmentation to it. So it's like, I feel like it could be worn at every level. If you wanted to build it up, build it up to full saturation, you could, and it also works really well blotted, but, um, I wouldn't say buttery. It doesn't really melt on the lips, which is actually kind of a good thing. So they do boast skincare ingredients in just about all of their products. And that is how, in a lot of cases, they justify the price. And also we are, you know, essentially paying for a smaller, more conscious, ingredient list. And I was watching one of my favorite beauty and my favorite clean beauty channels. It has been changed to conscious beauty because the clean beauty, the word has come to mean something so icky that brands are still using it. But you know, due to a lot of the groups that have co-opted it and just sort of the weird sullied implications of clean, meaning other things are dirty. I'm glad they moved away from that. And so a lot of those channels have come to call themselves like conscious beauty channels. And I think that that's sort of the new nomenclature around that. All right, let me move you guys out and we will hmm, put on a little bit more blush, I think, <laughs> and, uh, and chat final thoughts. I'm going to throw on some of the deluxe sample that I got. Uh, I forgot what the name is already, Sun Touched. It's the only matte one that I have. Let's see if I like that. Poor little guy. They always think that they don't wanna to go to sleep. <laughs> And then you put them down and they're like, oh yeah, sleep. Now, would it be easy for me to go and editorialize with eyeliner? Absolutely, make this look very much more like what I'm used to seeing, sure. Um, the one thing that I do wanna do, <laughs> I can't stop. I can't stop with this lip gloss. Oh, the Westman Atelier lip gloss the liquid lip balm that they just came out with. This is Nana and it's just a cool kind of lavender taupey color. Mm. And I just wanted to top that because I do feel like everything did end up a little bit the same texture on my face and I just wanted to balance it out with a little bit of bounce. Okay guys, ready to chat final thoughts on these. I appreciate a good cream blush. You guys know that about me. These are incredibly expensive, and I would say in a lot of cases, quite overpriced, unless this is exactly what you're looking for. A clean formula, clean, conscious beauty, and that these shades really speak to you. There are a lot of shades, and this is a very, especially if you do spring for the metal pan, a very luxurious experience. You can also just buy the pan and put it in a magnetic palette. That's also an option. And then you're, you know, just paying for the product. But the eco consciousness of them is pretty cool. And while this coral shade is very, very pretty, I don't think that it's totally undupable. I do want to touch more. I feel like I wiped it off right there. I don't think that this is an undupable shade, but this is the most unique cheek shade that I've seen in a long time. Like I still, my brain can't process that color. And I think that they call it a cool, rosy taupe, I think is what they called that. Light rosy taupe with iridescent sheen. It is one of the most skin flattering colors for fair, cool toned skin that I, I could imagine. I want to put it everywhere. I want to put it on my eyes because I feel like, you know, now that I did that eyeshadow palette, I need to talk about the eyeshadow palette. Can you tell I already forgot about it? I would put that on my eyes, no problem. I'm not sure that it would be really like pigmented enough. I think that you could use that on your eyes. It would almost look kind of like Charlotte Tilbury Oyster Pearl. You guys are seeing me. Oh, it's way pinker than that. So that's Oyster Pearl and then that's the um, the Cure Eyes color. Interesting. But yeah, I would say that that actually is a shade unlike a lot of other blush shades that I would use as like a one and done eyeshadow color. And it is just utterly gorgeous. Like I'm real excited about this one because it's just so uncommon and it doesn't exist in my collection anywhere. <sighs> real quick, let's talk about the eye palette. Yes, the Quadrant 
The refill is $36, and I'd be willing to bet, yes, the Iconic Edition is $56, and the Red Edition is $41, and this comes in two shade sets, two colorways. One is a little bit warmer and has a deep neutral gray in it that almost looks like a navy blue in the shade uh, Divine. And then the one that I got is called the Wanderer. They do show these on deep skin. I don't think that they really work that well on deep skin. The Spellbound shade, I think would work better because that deep gray is a little bit more saturated, but the, the one that I have would come out pretty dusty looking, I think. So it says, what it is, our first ever curated eye collections. Simple, perfect, and expertly, I forgot to put my glasses back on, that's why I'm struggling. Expertly curated to create both minimal and high impact looks, builds from a sheer translucent wash of color to rich saturated hues. Each soft to the touch color is infused with organic extracts like honeysuckle and gardenia and infused with natural bamboo and carnauba wax for seamless blending. These tissue thin silky powder eyeshadows transform, deepen, and shift with every layer, enveloping eyes in ethereal color. Some are sand dune soft and matte, some shimmer like a distant heat mirage and a, a blanket of stars in the vast desert sky. <laughs> okay. I mean, I think I've, I think I've hit capacity on bologna sandwiches, but while I appreciate a, I do, I appreciate a precious experience Maybe I would feel that it was more precious if I had gotten the metal tin for this one, but it feels a lot like the Victoria Beckham eye brick at about half the size and the same price. You know, and I feel like the colors are, they're fine, but like at least the eye brick from Victoria Beckham, let me grab that, because I feel like that's the thing that's the most comparable here. A little compact here that's in this very heavy metal that has, this resin kind of, you know, plastic top on it. And these are the shades inside. Scale reference. And I think that this is like $56 or something. And that's what this one would be if you bought it in the metal tin. I actually don't know how much is in here. It can't, I can't find it and I don't have the packages anymore. I recycled them already, but I mean, it's very clear to see that, you know, a precious, precious product like the Victoria Beckham Eye Brick still has easily twice as much product in it as this does for the same price. If you were to buy the metal tin, which this is already in a metal tin, Yes, it's replaceable, there is that, and you're probably going to need to replace it a lot more often because it's so teeny tiny, um, but I just, I don't know. This just, it's a little bit, like it jumped the shark for me in terms of teeny tininess. Um, I just can't believe that anything, just because it has like jojoba oil in it or something, is just like that special, especially putting it on my eyes, like, it's fine. You know, it, there is something to, the uh, the formulas being so well thought out and having this like skincare ingredients in them as well as performing and being really easy to apply. There's something really lovely about that. And I do understand, especially after having my mother here and watching her try some of my makeup, that there are a lot of benefits of makeup that is expensive like this. I mean, other makeup too, but a lot of this stuff, the formulas, I don't really show the capabilities of them that are better displayed on mature skin because there are products that really work on mature skin and there are products that don't. And I mean, you know, I'm 34 <laughs> and I have Botox. <laughs> like there's just only so much that I can show you guys in terms of wrinkles. But um, I think that these formulas probably are very well thought out in terms of who they're for too. Um, you know, I think that this is an age group that is, is larger than just me. But for the average buyer, if what you're looking at, all you're seeing is just like the colors and the formulas, which is often what we're talking about. This one to me is incredible. This one is very, very pretty, but you know, not, not totally uncommon. Um, the eyeshadow palette is very silly. <laughs> I hate to sound like a cynic, it's a very nice formula, it's fine, but it feels very silly and I don't like that I can't get a brush into just one shade really, unless I'm working with something that is like smaller than my finger, you know? Especially easy makeup, I do wanna be able to get my finger in there. But the lipstick is absolutely beautiful. It is um, very, very expensive for, you know, for this and I do feel like they don't give you another option other than the $56 luxury legacy, whatever they called it. Um, 
packaging, but it is very luxurious. It's very nice. And I feel like the colors are really nuanced. I absolutely love the shade Genuine because Genuine, 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 um, which is also a way of saying that, but um, you know, an incredibly nuanced <laughs> kind of cool tone rose right up my alley and I want to put it all over my face. Honestly, if I had my druthers, I could do my entire face in just this shade and this lipstick. I would put this on my cheeks and my eyes. I would put this on my cheeks and my lips and I would call it a day. <laughs> so these are the two that I would pick. I hope that this was valuable for you guys. I did want to try the new colors and I do want to kind of keep my feet firmly planted on the ground. And I think that when you do order these products in their little red packaging, you do lose a lot of the magic. And I don't think that that's really degrading the product and you know the quality of it. I'm not necessarily trying to disparage them saying that it's all smoke and mirrors, but I do think that there is a lot of um, merit to the experience of applying a product and that the packaging often matters. And so when you opt for that, it does feel different regardless of the fact that it is actually the same formula inside the package. So um, if that matters to you, it matters to you. And for me, um, when you do kind of look behind the curtain and you're just looking at a pan of makeup, I'm just thinking, you know, I'm comparing this to Salt New York. <laughs> it is really beautiful. It actually is a little bit uh, thicker and you don't have to put on as much as you do with the Salt New York and it doesn't stay as slippy on the skin. And I do really like the cheek formula for that. Like there is no tackiness at all. And I feel like it is meant to be a slightly longer wearing product. Obviously the shades are a lot more nuanced. There's shimmer to the shades that, you know, I don't think that there's shimmer in any of the Salt New York blush shades. Um, and this is just, it's just a different product altogether, but, um, it's about whether or not that matters to you. And when you strip that back, really what stands out is like the nuance of the colors. So um, I hope that this was valuable for you guys. If it was, give it a thumbs up. If you wanna keep hanging out with me on this channel, hit the button down below and subscribe. I would love it if you did. Thank you guys for watching. I love you so much and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys.